Right, hopefully we're recording. Um, we are here on Thursday the 17th with the gorgeous Bryce from Esoteric Atlanta and myself. We have got Janine Steffens from Turn the Page with Janine. Um, we've wanted to get you on for ages, Janine. Before we get into the <laughs> up close and personal, how are you? I'm doing really good. Um, uh, you know, things are, are starting to look up, you know, uh, in the current events and um, you know, the weather here is getting much nicer in Northwest Arkansas. I think we have like 75 degrees, which is fantastic. I can't wait to get out on my deck and just get in the sun rays, you know, um, get out of the basement. I'm in a basement office here. And uh, other than that, I, I, you know, life is really good for me. Fantastic. Every time I see Bryce's suntan, I'm jealous because obviously, but we've got spring here and they're coming in the UK and it's a gorgeous day, Jane. Uh, just a bit of sunshine makes so much difference to the mood, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it really does. Yeah, well, they say just all you need is 15 minutes a day in the sun just to get to change your mood. Um, absolutely. Probably running around naked so your whole body's exposed. <laughs> <laughs> me, okay, so apparently it's Apparently in Florida, in the state of Florida, apparently you can run around naked in your yard and no one can do anything about it because it's your lawn. <laughs> I learned that. Well, down here, you're not allowed to where you are. If you're I don't think so. Garden. I think it's a decent exposure, but apparently in Florida, you can mow your lawn, but ass naked, <laughs> and no one can do anything about it because it's your property. That's why I love Florida. <laughs> like it's oh my property. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was us Brits that were prudish. So, Janine, there were a lot of sp strings to your bow. Um, where do you want to start? Do you want to start with Turn the Page or your Akashic Records? Where do you, where are you feel enjoying to start? Um, I'll start with the Akashic Records, actually, because that's always been my passion. Um, I've Can I just go back a little bit and explain how I got to this point? Okay. Um, so I think I was, uh, my, my father passed away when I was 29 and I remember working in a corporate job and just doodling on a piece of paper. There must be more to life than this. And I just, just, you know, first of all, you just stop when you lose a parent. And I, I just started to research and I, um, well, you know, like how the nineties where you had, well, you know, like, uh, Dr. Catherine uh, Northrup, um, Christine Northrup, excuse me, we read all of her books, uh, Carolyn Mays, um, I think I stalked Carolyn Mays because I took so, so many of her classes and I traveled and um, she was the one that actually woke me up. To, uh, I was laying on a couch thinking, Oh my God, there must be more to life than this. And all of a sudden on a PBS station, Carolyn Mays popped up and it was like, she was talking directly to me. And that's why I started my research was about that time. So I, I learned everything about all the different healing modalities that were out there. And then I came upon the Akashic Records, and it was almost to me like it was uh, an initiation um, for me. Uh, and so after you go through this uh, particular training, um, and it was an extensive training, mind you, there's other people that were in this, this group, if you will. And we were, uh, I was reading somebody in this golden light. I saw this golden, it blinded me. I was like, I couldn't even see the person in front of me. I just saw this golden light. It was almost like if I was getting some sort of a download. And um, I was able to obtain information on everybody in the room. And it was kind of, I was shy. I, I didn't want to say anything. But then when they put us all in a circle and said, uh, you know, to kind of compare notes, if you will. And I just started speaking to these, these gentlemen and then the women, and they were just like, oh, my God, you know. And so I knew something happened at that point, and I, I fell in love with the, the uh, Akashics. Um, the energy of Kasha is how I like to look at it. Um, and so I, I went through, and one, one of the things you have to do, what they said you should do when you're going through this training, is do readings for 30 days for free for other people just to get a feel for it. I had so many people lined up outside my door. I couldn't keep up with it. And finally I went back to my teacher and I said, this is how many people I have. And she says, well, that's way too much. Just, you know, you've done what you needed to do for humanity. Now let you have to get an exchange of energy of money for this. And um, I, I still at that point didn't think I was making much of a difference, but I heard the feedback because I was, I was um, too, I don't, I don't know what the word was. I, I didn't have it in my self-esteem there, if you will, to, to know I was helping them. So I continued doing that with Reiki and I brought in, uh, I, I was learning cranial sacral work, but this Akashic information just kept coming to me. 
And so I would, um, I went through the corporate world trying to split my two worlds, if you will, uh, matrix and out of matrix, if you will. And I did that for a long time until um, uh, the COVID came in. Can mm -hmm. I say that? <laughs> so the C-19 came in and uh, um, actually um, be before that, um, my husband and I had gotten married. Um, so I married a little bit later in life. He had no idea what I knew. And then one day when we were moving, I'm finding my tarot cards because I read tarot cards too. That's where I used to start out. And I, he found all my little toys and he kind of, what is this? What is this? He goes, oh, you're one of those. And I'm like, what am what? <laughs> so when the, when the, the C-19 stuff came out, um, I decided that I'm not going to sit back anymore. I'm going to do this. And one of the things I said, well, what am I going to do with it is the Akashics came back to me. Um, and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And um, I was just getting the, the, just like, actually what I heard was just get up and go type of thing, you know, stop thinking about this. So that's what I did. And um, from that, I started my channel and I was channeling the information on the name and stuff like that. So that uh, I've, I've told the story before was um, I was driving in the car and I'm, I'm, I'm listening and saying, OK, I'm asking. I like to drive and, and, and meditate. <laughs> and I get information as I'm driving and uh, the song came on Turn the Page from uh, Bob Seger. And I loved Bob Seger. And I just thought, wow, that's a really cool thing. I could use it different ways. Turn the page for interviewing authors. Turn the page. is okay, we're moving on. That type of thing. And um, so I, I asked nature, uh, you know, and my uh, animal to totem uh, to is uh, the red-tailed hawk. And oh, as I'm driving, a red-tailed hawk flew over the top of my car. And I said, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. I couldn't wait to get home. You know, like, I got to get home. I figure out this YouTube thing. And I just started. And it was called Turn the Page with Janine. And um, that, that's how that started. So it went into that. And I thought, well, I'm going to also do the readings with it, too. Um, but, um, it, you know, I, I believe it changed um, because... I like calling it the Akashic Records because that was a label that I think humans put on it. But when I actually get into the energy of it, I'm in the Akasha. And whatever I'm channeling at various levels of dimension, that's the information that I'm getting for that person in front of me. Can you so I could be at a psychic le level and I could be getting somebody's loved one that's coming that wants to give a message. Or I could be even in a different dimension where they say that the, the, the Akashics are higher. Um, I, whatever information I get, I share with them. And then I added value to it because a lot of times if I would give the information, people would still have that, you know, look on their face. And I added the, um, the uh, archetypes to it. I said, I, I said, how would this go with adding? I'm asking spirit, how would this go with adding it? And it, it was beautiful. Hmm. People understood that is kind of like okay so i'm playing out this and i tell them that the archetypes will change as they change so um explain to our, if there's any audience members watching that don't have no clue what the akashic records are just never can you explain just briefly like what what that is sure yeah um the akashic um well but first of all akashic is a fifth element it's uh space ether and that's when I say that I'm tapping into the Akasha, that's what I'm tapping in is the, the ether. So the Akashic record is if, and because I was in the computer industry for 30 years, this is how my analogy is, is it's, it's one big computer system. And inside that computer system, you have records and files. So um, I'm actually accessing that based upon your intent of your question. So one of the things I ask people to do is to sit down and really think about their question because it's the intent behind it. So a lot of times what happens is I'll get information, but it also will take me to another past life. So people will bring some of the past life information into this life. And it's, it's, it's almost like it's on the same timeline uh, that they're bringing this pattern with them. That's the best way I can explain it. And they'll play it out. And sometimes we'll, we'll try to uh, work with that because it's at the cellular level. And we'll try to, uh, I bring awareness to them. And then once I actually bring, I'll get back to the, the Akashics, but once I actually bring that awareness to them, I leave it up to them. I give them homework, if you will, because they have the awareness and 
uh, now that they have the awareness, if they see it, they will have to keep working on themselves. I don't take control of that. I give them the information. I empower them with that information. And that's what this is all about right now at this time is everybody being empowered, right? Taking back our power. But going back to the uh, Akashic Records, so so basically at the time that we are uh, incarnated, right, we come in and um, we have all this information within us and I'm tapping into what it is that they're bringing into them based upon their questions. So um, that's the Akashic Records. That's the best way that I can explain it. So. Can you explain the archetypes to people as well? Yeah, sure. So the archetypes is that each one of us actually play out. Oh, well, there's, I've studied seven, 70 archetypes that people could have. So you could actually be like a, you could, you know, there's uh, on an archetype, there's the light side of it. And I call it the shadow side of it. And a lot of times let's say like a, um, a trickster, if you will, the trickster could be, uh, uh, could be a playful thing that, you know, that you, that you use humor and things and stuff like that. And, um, but then on the other side, you're doing it for uh, manipulation uh, type of type of thing. So when I get like an archetype of uh, a, a, a storyteller, I get a lot of those within people that are light workers. They have some information that they want to share with somebody and they, they could put it in symbols or words or stuff like that. Then there's the opposite end of it where, you know, it's basically the information that they're wanting to share. And then uh, on the, the opposite end of it, there might be something that they use it again for, for the negative, the negative side of things. So there's always that light and dark. And a lot of times the people that come to me, I see more often the good side of it, but then there's a pattern that may get them stuck. Yeah. They have it, but then there's this pattern and then I go into asking them. So it's, it's almost like uh, I get these, these pictures in my mind. So I take it from level to level uh, with them to help them with their healing. Does that make sense? Yes. I mean, shadow it work really is does. so important. It's so important. And Janine, when you're working with a client, it's really interesting to see how Mitzi's really wants to be in with this conversation. Has she's Aww. Really cool. so, is this the new cat? Yes, this is a new <gasps> cat. But as soon as you started talking, she came and really wanted to join in. Uh -oh. um, so do you, is it, when you're working with a client, I know as a generalization, is it sort of a one-off or is it an ongoing sort of helping them work through various issues or is it everything in between? Well, a lot of times it's, it's, it's everything in between, but a lot of times they will come back because I do a uh, 30 minute session. So this is interesting if I could actually bring this up um, in the, um, there is a, uh, there is an Akashic community of people and they set these guidelines and it almost reminds me of corporate. Yeah. Do this, do this, do this. Well, you don't tell Janine what to do because I'm going to break the rules no matter what. And I thought about this because I know that when I used to do readings, they were, could be an hour, an hour and a half. And that's a lot of time. So what I narrowed it down to was like 30 minutes, three questions. And a lot of times you can go beyond that. And I do go beyond that, especially if they're really needing it. I just don't give, give up the time. So a lot of times they'll go through it and, and they'll get the information and I'll say, here's your homework. This is what you could do. Once you do that, if you decide to come back to me, I'll know if you've done your homework and then you can come back and have another session. I do get repeat uh, people coming back to me. And one of the things that they always say is I wish there was a community. That's why I started up my community and Catherine, thank you so much. You're the first one to respond to that email. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know you it's anything, but I do, you know, when I saw your email, Janine, and this is one of the things that has appealed to me right from the start with you, is the fact that you really have gone into, obviously, I only knew you through when you started to turn the page with Janine, um, but I love the way that you're genuinely really interested in speaking to so many different people and then sharing your knowledge and passing that forward so when I saw your email about your community I just thought what a wonderful idea and the sort of nervous bit of me sort of kicked in and thought don't know if I'm going to have enough to share and then I thought well whatever needs to be shared will be shared but it's so lovely that you're doing that because Bryce and I have been talking a lot haven't we Bryce about this whole community and, and well, I, I need to did I I gotta look and see if I I've missed so many emails because I want to be a part of this community too this is fancy. this is fascinating yeah oh, well not, not only that too that if if you know there's so many people that love what the work that both of you guys do 
And then, uh, you know, we share the knowledge. And if they decide to jump over to you, they jump over to you. And uh, there's enough people. There's 7 billion people in this world. There's enough people that we can share to, or basically not share, but we help in the communities, right? This could actually be one big heck of a community. But um, I thought what I would do is bring in one person to kind of tell us, because everybody loves you guys. And before I go any further with that, Catherine, I, I saw that you jumped in one of my chats on one of my shows, and some some gentleman says, Catherine, I just love you, and or I'm in love with you is what he wrote. <laughs> and you said, <laughs> and I read it, well, I'm trying to do this show, I saw this, and you write, well, I sure hope you like animals, because I have cats and dogs and horses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Yeah. Exactly. I love your sense of humor, and I that that's what makes up who you are, but... So this community is, I have it like, you know, it's Patreon. I knew nothing about Patreon. So I said, all right, so the basic one, if people just want to get together as a community and they're not interested in it, so the next level up would be, okay, you are interested in, in energy work, but you want the Q&A. And then the third one is the VIP where, you know, Bryce or Catherine comes in and you tell your story, just like you're asking me. Um, pe people want to know, you know, I hate using the word gifts, but they want to know more about you and, um, you know, your experiences with energy and stuff like that. And then there would be a Q and a, and, um, so I thought, why not bring in all the people that everybody is watching on social media into this. And if you guys even think to take it to the next level, we just kind of rotate within our own communities that you guys have set up. Right. That sounds amazing. I, I'm um, obviously I, I must have missed the email because that that I miss a lot of emails. <laughs> but, um, but that sounds awesome. I would love that because yeah. it's such it's this stuff is fascinating to me because yeah. we as human beings, we're so much more complex than we really understand. And I mm -hmm. think understanding the complexity is the first start in starting to like crack yourself open. And I love that you're able to pick up on like, you know, in the yoga world, we call it karma, which I think people don't really understand in the West what karma is. All karma is, is action and reaction. It's your work. And we carry mm -hmm. patterns over from life to life to life to life. And if we don't deal with them, they become like a samskara, which is like a, you know, the old record players where you get a scratch in the record. And it was skipped. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It becomes one of those to the point where it's going to be so hard to break that. But, oh, <laughs> you really must have had incredible good karma from a past life to be in this situation right now. So, um, and so when we work, and, and I love talking about the shadow stuff too. This is something I've noticed is that so many people, when they enter into a spiritual practice, whatever it be, what may be, they have this kind of deluded idea that it's going to be just light, love, and happiness. Mm -hmm. But most mm -hmm. spiritual work is real dark. It's real painful. And it's- you Alana Danan did a whole thing on stuff that you know that, that's been around you. So she, she did that. And um, yeah, I, you know what? Um, I tend to not want to even go there and talk about it because uh, you bring attention to it. I don't like bringing attention to, to that kind of stuff, but- um, yeah, you're right. It is. And the other thing too, is a lot of light workers. It, so I see the various levels because I was a program and that's how kind of how my mind works, right? We are all programs somehow, but when somebody comes to me and they're needing healing and they're saying, how do I get involved with the community and stuff like that? I heard it over and over. I can't just sit back and just not let that build something for people to go to right so that that's where my thought was and how it evolves i just made a video and said however it evolves it's going to evolve on its own it's going to take on a uh, you know whatever it is and I was just speaking with you guys this would be excellent so a lot of and i did uh, did say that Catherine edwards would be the first one i think it was on april 28th to come out and talk and then all of a sudden everybody is like going to gravitate towards Catherine edwards and her healings and stuff like that and and then, um, you know, somebody else will come in and let's say, I don't know, uh, Tarot by Janine would be interested, but it's not, there's got to be a lot of people out there that want to learn the Tarot cards, right? But they can at least get the information from her and then go off and find someone that teaches Tarot. So, the, the, or there might be somebody in that community that says, I, I, I can help you learn Tarot. So it's, it's just all a very even exchange of information beyond uh, what we do right now. I think it's a huge commitment, but um, I'm also planning on having other people step up within the community to take these things over too. So, 
it's very like what you and Steph started, wasn't it, Bryce? So you and Steph a while ago, quite a few months ago, and Stephanie has then taken that forward to set her community and her little groups up. So well, it's that's um, all her. She I just promote it. She yeah. does the the groups, the support groups, and all that kind of stuff because that really is. You know, I mean it when I say it, the Ram Das quote, we really are all just walking each other home. Like yeah. we're all in this together. We all have to do our own work on ourselves. No one you can no one can do your own work for you, but we really are a community doing this together. We are the storm. We are vibration. Mm -hmm. We are energy. Um, and um, and that that uh that requires us to each that be sovereign in our own um own our own our records, own who we are, own our shadow side or light side all of that but also if we all did that together and helped each other along the way um this world would be such a better place and i think that's one thing i love about this community is i think most of us are understanding that in a very deep level the whole mm -hmm. where we go when we go all isn't just a slogan you know mm -hmm. like it literally is we are literally in this together and I, my belief is is that we all agreed to come here at this time together anyway we made that agreement to be here um for this moment to, and, and so therefore we got to live like we're in this moment and not just ignore it. And, you know, kind of hard right. To stuff right now, but, <laughs> but some people do. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, I always, I always say too um, on my channel where we go, when we go out, it, it, there's more to that. Just, you know, saying it verbatim, it's just like, it's no different from, um, uh, telegram. Everybody has a telegram channel and, and when they see some, or, if they have some information that pops up, they just take it and they forward to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. I basically shut down my channel and said, if you don't vet this information, because you don't know if it's half truth or not, don't put it into this channel here. It probably sounded really bad, but I shut the channel down for a day and said that and put a posting in there. If you read through it and it resonates with you and you've looked at it, looked up the information, you can forward it over to me because I take a lot of that information and I put it on my show. It's almost like I'm doing the news in the morning. And But I'll look at it and I go, this doesn't seem right. Um, yeah. And I'll, I'll take it and I'll move it or delete it. And uh, so that's what we have to do is we have to start being a, um, not shallow. We're not, we can't be at the shallow point anymore. We have to be, we have to, you know, just really start to take ownership of everything that we do. Every Well, Bryce, you know about all this. Every action has a reaction and stuff, so on and so forth. And I think that's how we got so much disinformation out there. Yeah. We all got confused. Yeah. There is we were literally just talking about this, weren't we, Bryce? Yeah. So Bryce and I have just recorded a coffee chat, and we were just talking about exactly this, Janine, because about that self-accountability of is so so important because um you know you it's got to start with you it's got to start with you and that's what i love about what you were saying about the akashic records and i can see how that really fits into everything else you're doing because we have to all admit that we've all got shadow parts to us as well right. and and that's normal it's not something that we need to keep pushing under the carpet and pretending that doesn't exist it's something that it can be really constructive and, and important to actually acknowledge and then decide what you want to do about it yeah and yeah i mean I, when we came in here we incarnated we knew that at some point that like bryce said we were going to be here and i probably said if i come back i want to meet bryce and i want to meet Catherine edwards if i'm going to do this you know and sometimes i think boy i wish i was younger when i chose to come in here because look at all this cool stuff that's going on but um as they some of them say we're going to live for, for like 400 years <laughs> but uh yeah there, there is uh how else are we going to learn we came here to, to experience being in this vehicle right and so there's m many uh, uh levels to that also um so there you could have the good side that you uh, totally enjoy and you know that you're in the light but when you feel that you're not in the light that's a shadow side that's coming up when i always say when we're feeling stuck right we can't move forward what is it that's stopping us so uh, when they ask the question i ask them the journal or to meditate on the question that they're going to ask me um i always know what the next question is going to be it's just it's just that it's just a, how long i've been doing this and people always go how did you know that's my next question how did you know and i'm i don't know <laughs> it's a pattern we yeah. all have these yeah. patterns 
And the shadow side is important too. I know um, I've been talking about this a lot. I, I know this through my own uh, 15 years of, of my own spiritual journey outside of YouTube is the, the shadow side of yourself. It's not, it creates the friction that's needed for the change. You can't change without resistance. You can't change without friction. Um, and so it's something that has to be explored in order to spark that change, to spark that course correction, to change that pattern, to change that karma. Um, and so it's so important for people to, to really look at that within themselves. I know Sean Stone had said that even with um, what we have going on in the world right now with the 1%, we'll say, and the heinous activities they've been up to, even though none of us on this panel or no one watching would ever do what they've done. What it does do, though, in the macro is that it, it shows the micro. It forces you to have to look within yourself at that darkness. And that's really uncomfortable to do. And But once you're able to do that, that puts you in such a better, a healthier position. It also grounds you, too, which, mm -hmm. um, which I find what's happening now. And I, I kind of what you're talking about. I, I kind of have been feeling that, too, Janine, seeing all this stuff come up all the time. And there is such thing as junk conspiracy. There is such yeah. thing as fake stories being put out there to derail. And I personally am getting, this is my personal opinion, getting really annoyed with assuming all these people are alive when some of them aren't, you know, and, and it's like, we have to ground ourselves. We have to be able to pull, settle into something, look at something for a while, settle into it and then proceed forward. And I think sometimes we're so eager just to go to this other place instead of actually pulling back and saying, hold on a second, let me think about this. Let me research this. I love that. That's, and that's what we, this is what this journey has taught us, right? Like we weren't researching what people were putting out. That's why we got in the position we're in as humanity. It's called critical thinking. We forgot how to do that as human beings. And so we even have to critically think with stories coming out on our own side of the stuff, like looking at things with a critical eye, you know? Right. Yeah, definitely. And one other piece I want to add to it, too, is an ego. Um, so our ego, I always say, is easing God out, right? So <clears throat> in, in my sessions, I will always let somebody know that, you know, what the energy will feel like when they're on the right path and they're in the light. And then when the ego comes in, it's also going to create the egos there for a number of reasons. But uh, sometimes it protects us and other times it just uh, brings our life to a halt. So if People are in the matrix. They've got they've got an ego because they, they there was this um, mind control stuff that was ha happening with the television, right? So their ego is going to protect them from believing that they were um, duped, right? Who you rather find? You rather know that uh, <clears throat> you rather believe what's on the TV than to be known that you were duped in life. You were lied to. You were taken. There's so many different words out there that you could use because um, everybody thinks, you know, that's just the way that I, I, what I've been observing. I can't speak for what everybody else is, is thinking. Sorry, this is my dog here. She's I was just, just about to make some comment about your tail because I love tails and it looks like <laughs> you've got one, which would make me very jealous. But isn't it interesting how the animals come to us when we're in this space and in these energies of having this conversation? Yes, she usually doesn't come and put her head on my chair here, but... Uh, it's one or two things. She's hungry or she wants to go out, but I, I don't see that. She just wants to be here with me. Yeah. My golden. This is my golden Bailey boo. But yeah. Um, so yeah, she lets me know when time's up for a lot of things. Come on. Mm. Come on, mom. You've been sitting here too long. Mm. So uh, in, in any case, yeah. So the, we also have to, there's so many pieces to the puzzle, but within 30 minutes, we, what I try to do with the records is I just try to address uh, what's, what's important. And a lot of times people will come back to me to continue to continue it on and uh you know um which is good and a lot of times it'll give them enough uh to get them going and if they don't and if i feel like they're not getting it um i'll know right away you know what i'm saying but they don't get it they're not open to the information and that's the ego so i have to recognize that too in, in, in a reading and do i bring it forward yes i will let them know and, uh, you know, they may not be getting it right when I'm saying it to them, but they will, uh, I think they will ponder on the information. So the ones that really uh, understand where I'm coming from with the information, 
I could tell uh, that they're they're in the light. They're re they're receiving the information, and then the other ones may not be. But a lot of times, people just want to know. Okay, I'm, I'm at this point in my life, and I don't know where to go, and, and I feel stuck. And so I'll open up the information and and uh, work with them on that. And I'll say, you know, nobody's going to do it for you. We all have to take control of our power. I don't care if you're 30, 40, or 70 years old. You're still here and you're still living and we, you know, you still want to work, you know, on, on something you want to help humanity. That's what all this is about. My type, my slogan of the sh show is turn the page, but it's helping humanity one show at a time. And I, and that's what um, I strive to do all the time. That's amazing. And how has sort of bringing your YouTube channel in um how is that because one of the things bryce and i talk about a lot is where when people are really stepping into their purpose and they really feel that they're doing what they were meant to be doing at that stage in their life and obviously it can change many times as we go through life what has that extra brought you has it brought you extra energy has it brought you sort of more compassion what sort of things have you noticed um, I'm alive more. I bring, I have more joy. Um, I, I wake up. It's not like I was working for corporate and go, oh, shit, I got to go into the office. It's more or less, okay, I, I got an idea. I'm going to go downstairs. And, you know, my, my husband, uh, he's back in the office now. So he, he has to be at work at 630 in the morning. And uh, I'm up before him and I'm already downstairs and he's like shaking his head, still trying to wake up, you know, and I, he keeps talking about retiring. And, um, you know, I could see that he's still still in the matrix. He's got one foot out. He kind of believes what I do. He doesn't watch my videos either, unless I say, well, did you see that one? And then I'll have to go and look it up because <laughs> he wants to keep peace. But, you know, that's what it does for me. I feel more alive than I ever have before. I know that I'm in the right place, and I've been waiting for this moment my whole entire life. Some people find it earlier, and uh, I think that as the energies change and we get closer and closer, to this craziness, um, I, I just knew that um, how, how I knew was everything was making sense to me, which I thought never made sense before. And I was such a rebel in it because, you know, I always tried to bring my essence into the corporate world. And I kept, I kept leaving jobs. I kept getting fired. I just didn't last. And, uh, but I knew that I had to work for a living like everybody else did. It, but in the same time, I also still did all this uh, other other things because I was always sitting on the fence. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is a time that we can't sit on the fence anymore. Yeah. Well, speaking of energy, though, I think that's such an important thing you just pointed out. You know, I think sometimes we get so stuck in like survival mode in our lives because that's what the matrix demands, right? The, the matrix, the, the matrix demanded that of us. Like they kept upping the ante, keeping up with the Joneses, everything got more expensive. And I have noticed that as well. It's like when you, sometimes we convince ourselves that we're okay, but like you said, your husband's still tired getting up. It's like the energy tells the truth. But whereas mm -hmm. you're up and ready to go because you're actually enjoying doesn't mean we don't get tired. You two can be very exhausting, <laughs> but it's a good tired. It's a fulfilling tired. <laughs> yes, you two can be very tired, but but it's different because there's more. It's it's putting your heart and soul into it. And I think that's such an important observation. And I think oh. everybody can look back at their life and look at their the, the gauge, their energy as to how they really were feeling in a certain situation because the mind will play tricks on you sometimes, but how they really were, were faring at certain jobs and at certain, you know, even relationships, all that kind of stuff where, where versus when they were in a flow, they were in like a in, in the light, in alignment with what they, their soul actually wanted to do. It is, it is being in a flow to be honest with you. And that's, that's what I know that I'm in the flow and, um, you know, once I, once, uh, it, it's funny because a lot of times I don't think I do very well. I'm tough on myself as I can be tough on others. And then it's almost like it's, it's my inner child that I still have to work with. Right. And it's almost like, uh, I'm not deserving enough or something. If I read a, if I read something that was very, what I think is very critical because <clears throat> I am very sensitive and emotional. Um, but, uh, you know, those things actually help me, believe it or not. They do. And they make, it gives me more creativity. It's something that I wasn't thinking of. Okay, now you've just opened up my world. That's how I'm going to take it. I'm going to take your negative and turn it into my positive. And um, 
and uh, you know that just it just gives me and I, th I think everybody should think about that too mm. a lot of times people do kind of stop they put the brakes on because you know you'll be constantly being told by somebody that's in the matrix you can't do that what were you, yeah. what were you thinking yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. interesting i mean i i you get into language patterns that you don't notice when i first started doing videos i was just like God, is that me? Do I say that all the time? Do I, do I you know, things you don't know yourself. And then if you hear yourself back or something. But one thing I heard someone say, and I'm sorry, I can't remember who I heard say it, is it's like changing the words at all. So I would always say I'm really busy. And then people would almost like take pity on me. And I'm like, no, I love my busy. It's not, I'm not running away from something. I'm looking at my life, again, what we just spoke about, guys, looking at my day, and there's nothing I want to drop from that. I'm enjoying all of it, and I've got the energy to do it all because it's a, such a cliche, but when you're doing what you love, it's not work. So, I mean, retirement isn't something my husband or I even think about because I really like what I'm doing. So why am I doing it yeah. and good when I get to that age? I stop, like, well, no. Um, but well, I've started replacing it and sort of saying when people are saying, oh, how's your day? Instead of saying busy, because that can people can judge that in a negative way, just saying full is really beautifully full because it is beautifully full and everyone's got different things they want. Again, this might change at different stages of life. So I'm the type of person where I love doing different things. I love being on the go. I love being outside. Yeah and everything and other people aren't other people's idea of when they really feel in the flow is when they're sitting down on the sofa with a book in front of the fire or something so it's different for all of us but what you realize is when you are really on purpose what i've realized is the criticism bounces off a lot easier doesn't it yeah 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 it truly does yeah the, yeah that that is true um but you know, overall, we just all have to find the place that makes us happy, right? Whether, you know, I've been hearing a lot more people say, instead of saying good morning, um, because morning is death, right? And they're saying happy rising or something like that. And actually, I, I kind of, at first I saw it, I saw it once or twice in the chat. And I said, okay, well, that's great, because people are trying to change their verbiage. And also, like, free dumb. Um, when you're speaking, I'm hearing free, you're free, you're free. And uh, the dumb is dumbing us down, right? <clears throat> so I like to just say, oh, I'm free or it's free or something like that. But yeah, the languaging is very important because they, uh, well, Bryce talks about this a lot. Um, I, I've watched some of your shows about, you know, the spells and stuff like that. And I think that was part of it, right? Spelling, the word spelling, all of that. It's a negative side, but I think we're, it's going to take time for all, uh, all that to change. And I think there's going to be so many people... The whole idea of racism and our consciousness for each individual, if there's 7 billion people in this world besides those 13 families that I hope are gone now, is that each one of us, as we do this, we change the vibration and we change the planet, we change everything, right? Isn't that what this is, this is all about? We're to get to the place that we are all free? Yeah. It's a collective consciousness. It's yeah. a, I've been saying that for a long time. Like, I think we're the storm. I think we are the storm and it's us shifting. It's us shifting our energy and shifting it towards, um, and, but Catherine said it great on the show where you have the tuning forks. If one tuning fork is vibrating higher than another, it will pull that other tuning fork up as well. And it's, so it is that collective consciousness getting the whole collective to start to look, to understand, there has to be a breakdown. We had to go through that phase of understanding what had been done so that we're educated because knowledge is power. But now that we have that knowledge, we saw the dark, like you're saying, there's a dark and light side of it. We, st we know what the dark side is, but now it's our mm -hmm. responsibility to turn that energy around because it's true. Energy can't be destroyed or created. It can only be shifted. And so that's, yeah. we're not going to just sit around and wait for like the Kennedys to do something. No. <laughs> oh my God. The hope for my husband kept saying my husband kept saying he thought i was saying like a drug word you know and i'm like oh. you know instead of hopium opium he's like what are you saying and i said it's a made-up word for people that you know are expecting this new system to come into place and i don't even know if that is true or not i don't know anything because i haven't seen any facts or data to base it mm -hmm. so i'm putting my computer brain back on the only way that i can ever create something is based off of facts and data and know that it's actually true by testing it, right? And I've been saying if there's going to be a new financial system coming into place, 
because I do know computers, that they must be running it parallel to the old legacy system. They've got to see and they're testing it and testing it, and that may take time. I'm trying to let people know that there's not going to be a switch that's flipped and we're just going to be in you know, euphoria or whatever you want to call it, that, this, that, that all this is going to happen. If they're basing it all off of money, that, you know, money has an energy, energy has money. And if you're basing it thinking that they're going to flip a switch and, and somebody's going to take care of you and give you all this gold and silver, you're going to be, you're going to be very disappointed. You know, I'm that. it's just pushing your power in someone else, isn't it? It's like, you can't, you know, you can't You're not taking back your power. Yeah. yeah, and you can't solve a problem from the same consciousness it was created in. And I think that's so true. And this is why I just love having these discussions because every single time someone will say something like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I hadn't thought of that because obviously I've got my box and my awareness that I look at my life through. And then Janine's got hers and Bryce has got hers. But when we all bring it together with a really open heart of raising consciousness, which we're all doing and raising our understanding in the process, you learn something every single day that get that then you look at everything changes when you look at it through that lens. And that's it's going back to the community. That's why it's so important that we could pass this information on. So the more people that are joining this community, so I start a community and then you start a community and Bryce has a community and everybody's traveling around these communities. Just think of the amount of information that we're awareness that we're bringing to people. And uh, not only that, there, what I've been hearing on this negative side is people that are aware of this, if you will, and they say, oh boy, these sleepers are going to be shocked when they find out. And I say, and actually, I went to Alana Danan, and uh, I, I, we were talking about this because I think she's she's coming up on my show real soon, and we're actually going to be talking about the future children. But g going back to that, I said to her, what are, what are your thoughts on this? And she says, why would we raise our consciousness and our vibration and have the ones that are sleeping fall go through what you know the devastation? Why don't you think of it as like we are helping raise our vibration and they are uh, feeling it and they know it and it's not going to be as de devastating and painful for them. And I said, that's that's beautiful. That's that's God's work, right? That's the part of the plan, of the bigger plan, if you will. Why would we want to um, watch them go through the suffering? You, you, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So as we yeah. as we change, they're changing on a level that we're not even aware of. Mm -hmm. And it goes, it's like that pattern of teacher, student, student, teacher, teacher, student, student, teacher. And, you know, I look at like Mr. T and like the Kennedys and, you know, all these big, big wicks who um, I know they're working really hard. And they're doing a lot. And I appreciate that. But in a lot of ways, I look at them as like teachers. They showed us things that we learned. And now it's our job to also be that helping hand for someone else as well, helping pull them up too. But it's like, you know, as far as like the good guys, you know, a teacher's job is to eventually not be needed. And so mm -hmm. that's taking our power back and our sovereignty back. And yeah, the whole attitude of wait for the sleepers just to crumble and fall when they find all this out, that's not you passing on, you know, the way that they were able to teach us these things was in a very loving way. You know, the way mm -hmm. that he, everybody that was bringing, exposing this, you know, the propaganda that he titled, you know, the F-A-K-E news. I don't want to fucking say that, but, you know, but algorithms, but, you know, that was a way for us to start getting our, 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 the wheels turning in our, in our brains and the critical thinking started. And that's now got to be passed on to the next, the next group. Um, and if you're right, as, as we're starting to awaken, other people are starting to awaken, whether they know it or not. You know, so many things that used to be like not even heard of are now pretty common knowledge, you know. And, you know, you've only got to look back. There's so many things doing the rounds, you know, that smoking was good for your health and um, a DDT kept the bugs away and um, ooh, laptop's about to go. Um, but, yeah, I think also everyone learns in different start, um, styles. And so the people that we might call awake. I always got very offended for sheep when they called them sheep or sheep. Um, but, you know, the whole point is they won't go through the same process as us because we're all living our lives in different ways. And, you know, there's a saying, ignorance is bliss. And for some people it is. And, and if you're the type of person that accepts something at face value, 
then you don't need to go through all that pain of questioning and thinking what could have been done differently. They just move on. So I think we spend so so much time projecting onto how others are going to see things and everything, whereas actually if we put some of that attention back on ourselves, everything sorts out back to the tuning forks again. Yeah, exactly. That's perfect. Perfect analogy that Bryce did with the tuning forks. Yeah. So as one, 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 you hit one, and one is louder than or powerful than the other. The other one, they come together. Well, um, it's great. Catherine said that on a show a while ago, and I was watching that show, and she said that I was like, "Ding, ding, ding, that's it." Yeah. And I will say too. Now, of course, there are people from my life that I've lost that I would love to be like, "I told you so," and get that apology from. But we have to, when, we're, when we want, when we, when we have that sense of wanting people to suffer, that mm -hmm. is really coming from a hurt within ourselves. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if it's wanting them to suffer, but I think it's that they have so much compassion because what they found out and what they know now, especially with the children and all that, that I think they were thinking that they were going to, you know, that what they're going to go through because what we went, have gone through but um, I think it'll be a little bit more easier because we signed up for this, everybody. Yeah. We yeah. totally signed up for this. We said we're going to be the, the ones in the forefront of doing this to make it easier for, for everybody else, right? And my, we, yeah. we, we've talked about this. Like somebody, I've said this before, somebody sent me a video once from um, that joint, we'll say that restaurant joint up in D.C. that, you know, where they play, you know, and there's, I think you guys know the, the place I'm talking about, but there was a recording standing outside of the restaurant of a child who was obviously in distress. And I could only listen to a couple seconds of it. And I turned it off because it was so upsetting and it really like unnerved me. And like, I was it made me cry. Like, and so I look back at that now and is it, is it necessary? I know we've talked, spoken about this, Catherine, is it necessary mm -hmm. for every human being to understand the full extent of what happened? Mm -hmm. Is that even necessary? To know maybe they maybe they chose not to come in at that level exactly we can't have it both ways can it we can't all say we came in and to do this job without accepting that they came in to do a different job we're right. all here we've all got completely different lessons to learn and um you know it, it's fascinating you know but and i think Again, I think we've got to stop worrying about that so much because, like you said earlier on, if you put your where you put your attention, that's where your energy goes. And I think we need to stop worrying about the sleepers. They're not sitting there worrying about us for a very good <laughs> reason because exactly. we're not going to achieve anything. But what we can do is just, you know, trust that they'll be all right and and get on with it. Really. Um, because a lot of what we're projecting is is our worries onto them. And as I said, everyone I know who thinks that I'm a complete nutter, they're not sitting there about worrying about any of these things. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that is so profound in so many ways that what you just said there, because I can't imagine that my husband's sitting there at work going, oh, I hope she's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how many spouses think they're going to come home and find their spouse with a tinfoil hat on their head when they come home, you know? Like, I, should, yeah. I should make one, but it's a waste of a foil. A foil. <laughs> well, and I, I've shared this story with Catherine before. My sister, you know, we have to remember compassion too. And yeah, everybody mm -hmm. has a different perception. And my sister's son, my nephew's best friend, back when this whole shenanigans started in like 2020, my sister saw through it just like we did. Um, but she was on the phone with her son's best friend's mother and her mother was, his mother was obviously buying hook, like hook, line and singer, the narrative of this deadly thing going around. And my sister was on the phone and it hit my sister told me like hit her that, oh my gosh, she's really scared. Mm -hmm. And she all of a sudden felt all this compassion for her, her son's best friend's mother that she was genuinely afraid that mm. something was going to happen. The responsibility she had as a mother for her children, for her and her spouse to keep them healthy, to keep them safe. And my sister was like, oh my gosh, like here I am getting frustrated with people who are acting this way and believing this, but to hear someone talk, I realize how afraid they are and it's, pa it's, it's painful. Mm -hmm. And I have so much. It is. It was when my sister told me that it was so eye opening to hear her speak about that. Like all of a sudden she felt empathy for for this woman because she was genuinely afraid 
And we have to and remember that, that people are- Can you realize how, can you realize how that rippled across the universe? You know, that, that one awareness that your sister had brought it to awareness to everybody else. That is so powerful um, of a story because there is a lot of fear out there, especially the, the, the crap that they're putting on these little boxes and people are sitting in front of them. I turn it off and I go back in the room again. There it is, back up again. And, but it's, it's, it, it is, it, what you just said is very, um, very important, but that is also another reason why I started this community. There's a, there's a lot of people out there that are afraid and they just don't know what to do with that energy because if they try to talk to somebody else and tell them their, their information that they have. So, you know, join the community and get in there and talk to people and, and feel like you're, you're normal again, because there's, I think a lot more, what, I don't know what the word normal means, but there's a lot more like-minded people that will join these communities uh, until they feel, okay, um, they are safe, if you will. And where your knowledge is, is, is when you empower yourself with knowledge. So like for me, you know, I'm a biologist. I've been into natural health, natural remedies for humans and animals for years, more care, years than I care to admit. So I don't have any fear around that because I understand what I can do personally to protect myself and my two and four legged family. However, I'm not a strong swimmer. And I ran a retreat in the Maldives a few years ago with a friend it was absolutely amazing in a completely sort of remote island in the Maldives. But we all went out on a boat trip and we went out on the boat trip into the middle of the ocean. It was absolutely amazing. You know, the sea life was amazing. But we all got out to go snorkeling and then the boat drifted away. And suddenly we're in the middle of the thing and there was not a single thing for as far as you could see that you could hold mm. on to. So I started like, almost having a panic attack because I'd never been in that situation before. And then other people thought it was funny because they were really strong things and they weren't remotely worried about it. So we've all got yeah. our different things that will push us over the limit. And, you know, to someone who's a really strong fit swimmer and has been in that situation, I'd never even snorkeled before. Um, it wasn't remotely scary but to me who'd never been in that situation before I was suddenly like well if I get tired or cramped there's nothing for me to hold right. on to at all so I think that where every time I think about laughing about people which I have done I will put my hand up who are really scared to that I think yeah but because I've got the knowledge and I understand why I'm not scared they they've got different knowledge but they probably wouldn't be scared in the middle of that ocean and I am you know, we've yes. all got our different triggers, haven't we? And our different areas where we feel really vulnerable. Yeah, my, mine is actually um, out here in Arkansas. They have uh, a lot of caves, a lot of underground stuff. And I won't go in them. Maybe I was one of those in, another, you know, another lifetime that was down under the tunnels. And, you know, I don't know. Maybe there was a lot of us that have come back that they that the 13 families have done something to you know and reincarnated i believe in reincarnation and we've come back and uh you know we said oh, they're not maybe that maybe we all did that and we said we're, we're not going to allow them to do that so that's why we're here at this time but i watched my reaction going into these caves and caves. my husband was so excited about it and uh i'm like i can't i can't no matter what how close another step i took i got more fear yeah. and i and i have to address that and i thought maybe that's what that is i don't know, you know i'm not gonna open up my records and find out because i don't want to i don't want i'm not there yet <laughs> yeah yeah you know so you have to look at everything as uh, a mere reflection right everything is a mere reflection of of um you know people that i'm talking to um, I know that they're, they're a rare reflection of me as I as uh, them. And they always will tell me before they end the session that I just love what you do. And I says, you can do it too. And you have it in you, you know? Um, so we are all one. We sure are. Oh, it's just been such a pleasure getting to know you more because we're used to seeing you asking all the questions. So I, know. <laughs> I love, love, love getting to know you more. Is there any sort of final sort of message that you want to share with people? Yeah, just to um, really, the one, one thing that, I, that I'd like to share with everyone is just take time to, um, you know, just uh, take the time to breathe a little bit. And, you know, even if you just breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth, just, uh, you know, whenever you feel a little bit of panic, a little bit of stress, 
that's the best thing that gets you aligned again. It doesn't have to be anything, um, you know, if you have a lot of energy and you don't know what to do with it, if you're a walker, go outside, get in you know, touch with nature again. Um, if you want to get, you know, if you're alone by yourself, um, you're feeling lonely, go to the store, go to the supermarket, talk to people at the post office, what, whatever it is in your community to get back in touch because I think a lot of people uh, from being isolated for so many years have gotten used to being isolated and they're tired of it. We're all tired of it and we just need to uh, connect physically again. You know, I think these Zooms are really good for its purposes, but at the same time, I sure wish I could give you guys a hug. <laughs> yeah, hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. <laughs> yes, you know, that we all get together and just celebrate life. You're all welcome over here. We've got lots of you can all come and play with my guinea pigs. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Janine. It's been such a pleasure. Bryce, it's always such fun doing this, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I just I just love you ladies. You guys are wonderful. And I would love to come back because I was so nervous to do this. I'm like, oh my God. Well, you didn't, but you guys that. you handled that like a pro. <laughs> 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 yeah some of the people that followed me from the beginning they said oh my gosh don't take this the wrong way but when we first saw you and now where you're at i'm like i'm growing just like everybody else is growing you know listen we all do that is one thing about running a youtube channel for if, if people watching if you start a channel like the first video that you release if you go back and look at it you're like oh my god you learn exactly. so much you learn so but that's 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 why we're here we're here to grow and learn so yeah, yeah. And yeah. as always all the links to find your name will be below in the um description blocks below the video so your website obviously i mean everyone knows your youtube channel but we'll put that there and everything and we will definitely be back to follow up with part two. Oh my gosh i would love to come back thank you guys so much and i appreciate it and bryce i'm going to see you soon too monday right? monday absolutely i'm going to see you on monday i was actually thinking would it be fun to do a spiritual round table with a bunch of people? Just would that be a cool yes. thing to do? Yeah. Let us, in the comments. <laughs> let, let us know, guys. What do you want to see? So <laughs> there you go. There you go. Thank you for watching. Everyone. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Everybody. Take God care. Bless. Bye.